Everybody. Welcome back to Jiu-Jitsu Motivation Podcast. Greg Melita, Black Belt Second Degree, owner of Hamptons Jiu-Jitsu. And I'm Brian DeLuca, Black Belt and author of Jiu-Jitsu for Small People and Other Weird Shit I Think About. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we got a really special guest here. We got Rich Burns, Second Degree Black Belt, uh, CEO of Kasai Grappling. Welcome, on. Welcome, Rich. Oh, I thought you were, <laughs> I was waving. Yeah. You can wave. You can wave. <laughs> So, yeah, we welcome uh, Rich back in. Rich is uh, a resident uh, for us here at Hampton Jiu-Jitsu, and um, we love him coming out. And anytime you can come out here and share knowledge, it's uh, really important to us. So we love him to come on board. We wanted to have him come in and talk a little bit about his history in Jiu-Jitsu, where he thinks the sport is heading forward today. And actually, we can actually start off, Rich, with, with our history and how we met. Like to, well, that's, uh, that's like to get everybody let's to, hear the story. Uh, let's hear the story, story Rich. Yeah. I you see a smirk. Start it on. off, or you want me to? Do I, see a, oh, okay. I see a smirk on Rich's face, so I think <laughs> this is going to be a good story. So yeah, so yeah, not a lot of people know, but when we opened up Hampton Jiu Jitsu in, in 2016 here in Southampton, um, he's in a random class one day. Uh, Rich was driving by, he sees Hampton Jiu Jitsu on the sign, and uh, pulls in. And then, uh, what happens from there? Well, you, you need the context, yes, which yes. is. I've, I've, I've been running the real Hampton Jiu-Jitsu for many years before Greg opened his <laughs> in my basement. Oh, so wait, was there some, like, copyright issue going yeah. on here? Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that was, yeah, uh, in his basement. It's I had to change the name to, like, Burn Jiu-Jitsu mm -hmm. from Hampton, but it's in my basement, and I'm just always recruiting people, anybody <laughs> that I can come find train. <laughs> that will come and train or people we import from the city or whatnot. And then one day, there's a big sign, Hampton Jiu-Jitsu. Drove by, I said, you gotta be kidding me. And then the next day, I wanted to try it out, but it was a beautiful, perfect day, and I went paddleboard instead. Because, <laughs> you know, those nice, sunny, windless yeah. days, I want to go. So I figured, look, I go paddleboarding. So I went paddleboarding, and unfortunately, during my paddleboarding trip, it was like May. And that's like, I don't know, mothering season for like the birds or something. And <laughs> I ran into a swan <laughs> that kicked my ass. <laughs> Now you think you should, of have swans. It, you should have brought it to your hand as you get to in your basement, and you should have brought the <laughs> swan there. Well, <laughs> you think of swans as these nice, calm, you know, pretty, beautiful animals. This was a mad, badass swan. <laughs> Kept chasing me, knocked me off my board, wow. almost drowned me. Water's freezing. A guy rescued me. I'm soaking wet, <laughs> but I still was committed to come over to Hampton <laughs> Jiu Jitsu. So I showed up. I said, I met Greg, and I introduced myself, and he says, like, why are you smoking wet? <laughs> Why do you have a swan we, feathers? We came in. Why do you have swan feathers in your ranch yeah. card? He came in. He's like, hey, you know, my name's Rich. I'm a black belt from, from the city. Oh, yeah. She's got this paddleboard incident. So this was like my first intro. Yeah. So so Greg was nice enough. He didn't have a gi yet at the time, but he let me a rash guard. It was a gi class. Mm. But I convinced a couple of the guys to go no gi. And uh, I've been here ever since. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of, uh, that was like the first intro of meeting Professor Rich Byrne, and, uh, you know, coming in, that was kind of the wave of uh, Rich bringing out all these amazing guys to our academy. I mean, uh, once Eddie Cummings stepped in our door and it basically just, you know, wiped the floor with all of us uh, old school guys, we kind of were like, all right, we got to open up our minds. And uh, Yeah, really but we've had a lot of stuff. people out here. Yeah. Visiting, yeah. yeah, we've had, um, I mean, Eddie Cummings. Gianni, you know, the Meows. Gianni Whippo, um, the Meows. Uh, yeah. Mateus I mean, Lutes. Lutes. Uh, yeah, we got them all on the wall here. There's just like way too many to name. Lots of here. people. Uh, um, Tex. Tex. And then who else? Um, I'm trying to think. But yeah, either way, that's, that was kind of a huge thing for us at Hampton mm -hmm. Jiu-Jitsu because the whole the whole idea of us out here was to not put up a team flag and, and it was to be open to any and all different styles and you know, yeah. a conglomerate. Yeah. You've trained with a ton of people, right? Mm -hmm. You've trained with Danaher. You've trained with Eddie Bravo, correct? No. No. Eddie Cummings. Eddie Cummings. Yeah, Eddie yeah. Cummings. Right. It was an Eddie. <laughs> it was an Eddie. It was an Eddie. Sorry, wrong Eddie. Wrong Eddie. So on that note, your history and how you got started, it was actually the owners of the UFC. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's I, I've told the story before, so yeah. so I know you've heard it, but but um I was a runner, you know, and I I just I was always in shape. I'm yeah. maniacal about staying in shape. Mm -hmm. And I hurt my hip. I had a labral tear in my hip. Mm -hmm. and, you know that I feeling. Run, <laughs> about that. Yep. 
and um, I needed another sport. And we were doing some transactions with Frank and Lorenzo okay. for Tita. It wasn't even for UFC. It's just for Station Casinos, the company. Mm -hmm. that we, um, we bank. I've been their banker for years. Mm -hmm. And we were discussing uh, Station Casinos, and we were talking. They were uh, doing a leverage buyout at the time. It was about, I don't know, 15 years ago. And uh, they needed some more equity into the deal. We were discussing and said, well, we own this other company called UFC. Maybe we can contribute that as part of the deal. And, that, and I said, like, what's a UFC? <laughs> and, and I swear to goodness. Right, what I year thought, was this? What year was this for context? Um, about 15 years ago. About 15 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So I thought UFC, I swear, was United Furniture Company. Because <laughs> I knew of a company called right. United Furniture Company. I just so I, Anyway, no, they told me it's Ultimate Fighting. Uh -huh. So I started watching it and I got hooked. It was mm -hmm. Awesome. So I started watching. I became like the biggest fan. I said, oh, you got to teach me how to do something. Said, well, Rich, you need something to do for workouts. Because I was getting swimming. I was getting right. bored sick. So they hooked me up with a, a kickboxing instructor, which I loved. Mm -hmm. Phil Nurse in New York. Great. But he beat the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Even just the, you know, just the hitting yeah. pads was... I was using black and blue marks all mm -hmm. over. And um, I think it's like a little bit of a younger man's sport if you're, if you're learning it. And then they said, well, you think Frank, kidding around, literally says to Lorenzo, you think he's ready. And Dana White was there too because we were working on it. And uh, I said, what do you mean? Think I'm ready. Says, you think he's ready for jujitsu? <laughs> and they go, no, nah, he's, he's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What do you mean? <laughs> You're like, okay, challenge accepted. You just called me a pussy, right? <laughs> yeah. And they said, do you know what jujitsu is? I said, yeah, you've been watching UFC. It's when they right. go to the ground. And everybody gets bored and they want to stand up. But that looks like the category killer. Like mm -hmm. I'm thinking Hoist Gracie. Right. And, and, yeah. and they said, okay, we'll set you up. So they set me up with John Danaher. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. Back up. They set me up with Henzo. Okay. As your first jujitsu My first lesson ever. So I came into Henzo Gracie yeah. Academy. And I said, hi, my name is Rich. I'm here. I have a lesson set up. Oh, you're the guy. And so drove him from New Jersey just to do this one private with me. So he does the private. And uh, Henzo's awesome. I, he and I became friends, like, for life, you know, on that day. Mm -hmm. But the only problem was I don't think he was going to come to New Jersey a couple times a week to train. To train to New Jersey. So I got passed yeah. around to different guys. Um, and I saw John Danaher. In the corner. So sorry if the story is going on too long. No, but, no. It's, it's but this is still this story. is still that long ago now. This is fifteen years wow. ago. Yeah. So uh, John is this nondescript guy. He had hair back then, just like <laughs> a big bald spot in the back. But John was in the back. Uh, did, didn't look like he was very approachable, <laughs> but he sat in the back <laughs> and he trained Matt Sarah. Okay. And Matt Sarah at the time, mm -hmm. this is before he beat. Okay. Won the Ultimate Fighter and all right, that, right. but he was known, at least what I had watched, as like the best jujitsu guy in the UFC yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. Maybe today it would be too. He's great. Yeah, player. he was probably the highest level yeah. uh, black belt right, right oh, in yeah. the UFC yeah. at that point. Sure. Matt Sarah. And then Matt Sarah has his big fight coming up, the finals of that Ultimate Fighter coming up around that. Right, right. Might have been a different fight, but he has coming up. He's the best fighter in the UFC in jiu-jitsu, and his coach is John Danner. I was like, the guy is the best jiu-jitsu fighter in the UFC. This guy is his coach. I want him to be my coach. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, uh, but then I watched the lesson that John had with Matt Sarah, and John just beat the living crap out of Matt Sarah. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself two things. One is, not only is he the coach of the best guy in the UFC, but he can beat the best guy in the UFC. <laughs> And and even better than that is I love the way his mind works that he's not letting Matt Sarah win the week before his fight. He's still beating him. <laughs> That's my kind of guy. Domination. So I, I went over and I introduced uh -huh. myself to John, who I don't think John would normally take on a 40-something-year-old white belt like right. me. But John saw me come in the day that Henzo did my lesson, and he said, oh, this he must be some kind of VIP. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll take him on. And, you know, then John and I did privates together for about, you know, three years. Um, um, and I learned all my fundamentals from John. That's amazing. Everything. And became super close, and he's like one of the best guys in the world. Yeah. 
That's amazing. I mean, how many people can say they have that kind of a history yeah, in, in, yeah. in starting jiu-jitsu? Right? Started with the UFC almost, right? Yeah. UFC pushing you to your first uh, jiu-jitsu coach. Most of us like Google it and find jiu-jitsu. That's yeah, how you yeah. Do that. and then that'd be introduced by the Keto brothers. I mean, yeah. Them setting you up with Henzo Gracie. By the way, we also, we ended up raising all of the capital that before uh, Fertitta sold, mm. um, we did all of their finance. Oh, we did. Uh, wow. after, you know, ran all their before they sold the UFC. Well, now they don't own it anymore. Yeah, yeah. But, but when they did own it, we mm. did all of their finance. Wow. wow. That's amazing. So I got front row seats at a lot of fights. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. That's awesome. On top of that. Um, so now, next question for you. So now, currently, I mean, but fast forward years later, um, owner of your shirt here, Mushin Martial Arts, that's in the uh, city. Yep. And a um, bunch of great guys from there. They drop into Hampton Jiu Jitsu all the time. And then from there, after our Swan, post Swan meeting and training out here, what was the uh, motivation and how did it all come about for Kasai to start? And what was the whole? So Kasai is really a passion, a passion project, a yep. labor of love, right? Yep. So I've been watching jiu-jitsu and it just, look, I'm as fanatical about jiu-jitsu as anybody, as <laughs> are most of the people I hang out with. Yeah. Yet all of us can't even watch for more, you know, for more than a short period of time, you know, a lot of the IBJJF matches because they're just too boring. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, wow, with all this sport has and watching how maniacal fans are about watching UFC. <laughs> Um, what's, and, and jiu-jitsu is so much, you know, more technical. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not the blood element, maybe, but you, you know, right. um, can't we turn it into a, can you professionally run with all those great production values that you have, something like UFC does? Can you take some of these, some of the greatest yeah. athletes in the world and turn that into um, something of the scale? I mean, it'll never be what mixed martial arts is for mm -hmm. obvious reasons, but can you make it into something? Can you elevate the platform? And that, that, was, that was how we thought about it, is can you elevate the sport that we love so much? And also the thing that made me sad is, without naming names, but you know, some of the best, most talented jiu-jitsu fighters in the world become MMA fighters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? You know, they learn jiu-jitsu when they're you know, young kids. Mm -hmm. They never learned how to box or mm -hmm. kickbox, but they learned it later. So their, their skill level of kickboxing compared to their skill level of jiu-jitsu is you know, here versus here. Right. Uh, but they did, and you know, so they're never going to be as good as mm -hmm. they are in jiu-jitsu in that world as they are in this world, but they do it because of their life. Right. And it's just sad to me. So, you know, is there a way to make, mm -hmm. give them a way to make a living doing jiu-jitsu? Give them the crowds. Like if you, if for any of you who have ever been or watched our Kasai tournaments, like we we've have our, many of our biggest shows are in the Manhattan Center in New York City. Mm -hmm. Manhattan Center is a professional venue. That's a real place. Yeah. You know, that's where yeah. they have giant concerts. You know, you know, gi giant bands play there. I mean, it, and we put the stage in the center, and then the crowd around it with the balconies. I mean, your name gets announced. You know, I talked to people that have fought. You know, for for a decade, they said I never had chills like I had. You know, when you call my name and I walk down that music, wall, you know, roll the music, the smoke. Everything. It just it elevates the sport to a different level, and that's really what we want. And that's really, I mean, that's you know, that's sort of why so many of them went into mixed martial arts, right? It's you know, there's where their revenue stream is, right? You have to make you have to make money to, to live. Let's mm -hmm. let's face it. So unfortunately, you know, but what you're doing with Kasai, it's it's a totally different. It's a game changer for them. Yeah, no, definitely. I think we have a special guest calling in. Oh, okay, special guest. <laughs> Hey, hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> how's everything? Mr. Lutes! How are we doing, big man? Everything good. Can you guys hear me well? Yeah, we can hear you great. Hey, yeah, right? nice. Yeah, you, someday. Man. I miss you guys, too. I'm being so busy over here. The Academy is doing so well. I know. We, we uh, heard. Give us a little um, give us a little intro and uh, you know how your Academy came about, where we can find out more information about it and all that. Of course, like, uh, yeah, guys, my name is Mateus Lutes. I'm pretty sure you guys know me. Uh, <laughs> this <is a> <laughs> We've been friends for so long. So, yeah, I just recently opened my own academy. Roy Jiu-Jitsu is located in Mineola, Nassau County. It's just been amazing. I love Long Island. I think Long Island is one of the best places in the world to live. 
And I'm just happy to have my place open and running here in Mineola. We're doing so great. I agree, man. That, that's amazing. And you've been out to Hamptons Jiu Jitsu a bunch and did a seminar here. Everybody loves you out here. And uh, anytime you can come out, it's amazing. Everybody loves them everywhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It, I think I it, it, we got like uh, you got it from your Professor Marcelo, but Mateus Lutes is uh, one of the nicest guys in Jiu Jitsu. I always say. You know? <laughs> I, I I just like to to be. My mom taught me well. Let's see, let's put it that way. My mom taught me how to be a good guy. <laughs> That's good. So we brought you on today because we have Rich on for this episode. And uh, what's unique to this Jiu Jitsu Motivation podcast is every guest that we have on part of the show. We get uh, one of our subscribers or fans or followers to send us a video of them rolling. And the guest on the show reviews that roll, right? But now today, okay. if Rich and we have yourself on, we got a special role that both of you guys are going to create. Oh, no. <laughs> in other words, the person that you interview is usually the pro. And, yes. And yeah. the person writing so, in, the pro beats them pretty badly, and then they, they say something nice. <laughs> so, in this case, you have a... a tape of him beating me up. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're reversing it today. We're yeah. reversing it So today. we have a, a hey, hey, but time out. Before, before we review him beating me in jiu-jitsu, we also have to leave time for, for me beating him in a different sport. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Right. oh, okay. Yes. Oh, that is a story. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have so, another story. Right, so, says, oh, my God. Here we go. Okay. So let's, let's, bring, <laughs> let's bring the footage up. Let's bring the footage up. Okay. Right. Here we go, guys. So... So both of you feel free to narrate at any point you want. Switch the yes, oh wow, this is two years ago. Yeah. I think the theme of this role is Matthias is letting me win. <laughs> and I'm still not winning. Yes, yeah, so we got two years ago at Hampton Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I decided to get a little candid action here. He, Mateus turned into a leg lock expert for this role. Yeah, I, I see that. It's, it's all legs. I, yeah. <laughs> so what happened is, is a, is a little story behind this role. Rich told me he would take my bag because he was training with Paolo for so long. And then I say, I want to see you trying. That's why I gave him the chance, but that didn't happen like that, my man. <laughs> <laughs> denied, denied. He is. And he told me Rich is hey, training, arm attempt, arm Rich is training with Eddie Cummings, so he's going to take my legs. But, yeah. <laughs> but that didn't really happen either. <laughs> we got an arm bar struggle here. Let's see. I don't know. Mateus' bicep can handle this, I think. Yeah. That, okay. So that was a good thing if you guys could pause. I like that moment right there. So what happened is, there's a. I'll remember because I was going to fight the, the, the tournament, if you guys could go back. And a little more here. And... I don't know if you guys remember, this was right after Kasai Pro 3, so Wagner was good in the Kimura rolling to the armbar. So I was training this escape that I blocked with the, with the hand underneath the tie, and then I locked my legs over his ankle, as you guys can see it. They allowed me to escape without giving the Kimura back. And then I just tried to toe hold something to get out of that. Actually, that was a very, that was something that was working for so long on that situation. He said... Truth is, I think the reason I did so well is Mateus is a little afraid. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> See, he's sitting back for leg locks. Oh. When have you ever seen that before? Yeah, he's going. I want to see what you you were talking so much about. I want to see you able to finish or not. <laughs> see your game. <laughs> <laughs> this is when you started to really dive into the legs, Mateus, all that like the intricate leg games or what? Yeah, I feel that like this is something that I consistently talk to my students about it. That if you want to like if we're struggling with something, you're gonna have to understand that. So like in any problem in life, you're struggling with that problem, you're gonna understand what is happening, why. And that was always tried with some leg locks, leg lockers, and I felt that that was a trap. So I say for me to be good in defending this, I'm gonna have to understand how they do it and what they're looking for. And that really helped because the fight is up. The fights after that one, I was able to try to defend. I think Rich is in a little Imanari role kind of thing right there. Can you go go back to that? Yeah, yeah. Second, man. Yeah, it's. Uh, thanks for stopping it before it happened. Here we go. Here we go. I think it's where he hits it. There you oh, go. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> yeah. Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Looks like you hit a rebolo on him, like you kind of turned uh -oh. it into your own bolo. 
Oh, we're going out of bounds here. I know. Look at that back take that I was talking about. Oh. Ah, didn't happen, huh? Okay, so I think you're just not used to an opponent at this level. Oh, yeah. So now that was like, that was the time that, all right, now I'm going to muscle this guy up. I'm going to show some strength here. <laughs> just throw his legs away. I don't remember if, I don't remember if I even end up getting any type of lead locks on him. He was very good defending it. Yeah. I learned my leg lock defense from you in your match against BB Monstro. Oh yeah, that was just like break it and I escape after with whatever's left. You still, you won the fight though. Yeah. That was good. That was the strategy. They try to win. Whatever happens is, is collateral damage. You, the brave, that is the fight spirit. Yeah. That was like whatever happens is, is collateral damage. Yeah. How's it feeling now? Everything good down there on the knee? Yeah, it's great. I had time to recovery. Like I used the, the breaking throughout COVID to to do something, put things in place, especially my knee went back on place. I was able to get a very good time to rest and recovery. You know, when you're training consistently, it's really hard to have some. Oh, he got me. No way. Hey, go back. No, I think, I think, no, I think, I think time was, ran out. I think it was time. I think you might have pulled out of there. Hold on. I think he got bored with me. Let's look at the time. Oh, no, we still have time left. Yeah. Look, it's still time left. Yeah, that was a tap. Oh. Wow. Uh huh. <laughs> Look, yeah, my marriage. <laughs> All right. Oh, there comes the power. <laughs> That's Lucha special right there, double under. <laughs> I think I thought I heard the bell. I Here comes the noise. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, there's only three seconds. One I zero. I, I think I heard the bell. Oh guy. no. We know. We know the uh, the trademark uh, uh, trademark yeah. north south choke was on its way though. Uh, so, so tell them about yeah, I was, I was just, that was like, yeah, so now, I had you so got some payback for that one. Is, was that the same trip? No, no okay. Trip. Maybe. Maybe. So, a, a different part of this story here, so that was probably a different time, but um, then Rich decides to challenge Mateus to one of Rich's other most favorite yeah, sports. So what, what sport is this, Rich? Paddleboarding. But not oh, just any normal no. ocean. Wait, no, did, did the, this involve swans? No. <laughs> the truth of the story is, Mateus was looking forward to going paddleboarding. Just looking forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, enjoying it. He'd never done it before. Mm. He, 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 so you decided to take a guy but, that's a white belt. But, but Mr. Impatient, we, we had a whole crew there, and they wanted to go to the beach. And he's like, Rich, come on, let's go paddleboarding. And I said, let's go to the beach. For an hour, and then we'll go paddleboarding. We get to the beach, and he says, "Why can't we go paddleboarding on the beach?" Uh, and I said, "Because we're going to go in a nice, calm um, bay, and it's your first it needs time." Needs to be like last. Well, nice he's like, okay, okay. "The ocean is not that that rough. Let's just go in the ocean." <laughs> and I said, "I don't think you want to." He insisted. You know, he's a very persuasive guy, Mateus. Yeah. So we went in the ocean, and you tell him the rest. Oh my God. So what happened is I'm going to tell you talking about like, how was he patient, but I'm going to tell you guys a tip. If Rich ever invite you to do something, expect to be left behind because you went out of board <laughs> and he left. And so like, I was fun. I could even pass the reef. It's the reef, right? The first waves. What is the name of that? Like the first two, three waves. I couldn't pass that. So the, so then the, the ocean got a little calmer. I was just getting beat up by that board so bad. People laughing at me like at the at the at the beach. I was like, it was incredible. But Rich just took it off and he went. <laughs> and he went for like he went so far that I couldn't even see him anymore. He was so far away and then he came back. I was like, why this guy like why would you do that? He didn't even look back. He just didn't care. <laughs> he didn't look back. Wait, you, you thought he was gonna be right behind you. I thought he was behind me. Okay. Yeah, and he was behind you, just really yeah. far behind you. <laughs> yeah, like big strong guy that can beat up all these, you know, and guys, like like nothing. Kasai legend. Yeah. Just didn't. You know, the waves were just stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But come on, man, you can you can't control water. That's one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. And but if I had a better teacher, so look what he told me now. <laughs> so he told he told me, look. Now you go. Sorry, guys. Let's keep falling off. One sec. Okay. This is a struggle. They call it.
Yeah, with it's the cloud. Yeah. He's like, I have to keep pushing back. You guys can hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah we got yeah. you. So my headphones keep falling off because of the cauliflowers. It doesn't fit. You guys understand? It's so hard. He came back uh, for another trip, maybe two times. And um, we went in the bay. And, you know, I, I, I take a lot of people out for the first time. And some of them never get to stand. They fall in the water all the time. Within 10 minutes, he's standing and he's paddling super fast. Bobby oh, looked like a chisel from a statue, like something out of a magazine, too. Right? <laughs> that was, that was, a, actually, I, the paddleboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he figured it out there. After that trip, I saw paddleboard in my, my house here, like a little, like not a, not up out there out east, but close to my house, you have like a place that is very nice for paddleboarding. And I started doing some paddleboarding myself and it's actually really nice and, and relaxing. And I know, now I know how you, how, why you love it so much, Rich. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, but look, if another tip, another tip from a sales yeah. if Rich ever invite you to his trips, bring food. Because he doesn't eat. Rich doesn't stop to eat. He like he wants to eat one meal a day and that's it. I was yeah. like, all right, but what is the food, man? You're not gonna stop to eat doing all these activities. I wanna eat. <laughs> and he was like well, when, when he was just that barbecue. Remember when we all went for that uh barbecue out here in the Hamptons? Yeah, we were there for that. Yes. But you know how that was Rich, nice. is, right? Rich has one meal a day when he was back doing the special diet he was on. He would go to the deli here and just buy a pound of roast beef meat. Uh, That's pounds, it. Oh, two, two pounds, pounds, two pounds. Just straight meat. And then he's done. For the day. <laughs> no, and, and then he expects me, like a 25 years old, 26 years old dude, to just don't eat. Like he just goes all this energy. Like where he has all the energy in the world. Like he wants to train in the morning, he wants to pedal board. He wants for a walk. He wants to go to the beach. I was like, my man, I got to eat. Like, <laughs> let's stop. Let's eat again. Two pounds of roast beef a day, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Mateus, what, what do you got coming up? You got um, anything coming up? Are you focusing just on the academy for now? What so we it's great news is happening. We, uh, the academy is very doing very well. Actually, let me show you guys a little bit of the academy. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. We have open mat happening right now. Look, we have a lot of people training there in the back. Yes, I mean, the desk now taking care of the academy. So we are about to expand it. We're doing so good. Business is going so well. Uh, we're expanding the academy. We're starting to the expansion soon. And I am waiting. I might do World Nogi. It was just announced this week. I think that is a tournament that I want to do it. I was able to get the words in blue, purple, and brown. And I wanted to get in black belt. It's going to be a very good achievement and something that would uh, fulfill a dream of myself, becoming a world champion of black belt. Uh, it's amazing, man. Well, shoot, luck with that. And then I think on Long Island, everybody on Long Island can uh, attest to this, especially, you know, academy owners that, you know, we're happy all the restrictions are uh, lifted and everybody can start to, you know, be comfortable coming back on the mats and training. So we're definitely thankful for that, you know? Yes, that's like, that was a rough year, man. I'm you and me greg we, we chatted like on the on the on the sidelines we're talking to each other and see how things are and we know how tough it was we like a few weeks ago we were together in a tournament in long island that was pride it was a very nice tournament we saw each other there we had the opportunity to talk and, and like you invited me to be part of the podcast and i was just like looking around and seeing how crazy it is that we're able to have a tournament in long island with our academies open everybody having a good time is it was a very tough year it was a challenging year but i'm just happy that it's almost over now it's like all the restrictions lifted we we still gotta watch out we still gotta be cashiers but things are going good now and that just makes us stronger and make the group stronger all the student support is just growing and make everything so much like more solid and and giving us like strength for whatever that whatever is there to come out Whatever is to happen, we're stronger than ever now. Yeah, no, that's great, man. That's 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 exactly uh, you know. So, but no, we appreciate you coming on, and we'd like to have you come on specifically as a guest on you know another uh, date. We'll have another uh, role for you to, uh, to critique and check out. But yeah, let's let's schedule you in. Let's get you back out to the Hamptons. Maybe paddleboard round number three. And maybe, round maybe you can critique this paddleboard. 
That's Ooh. right. Oh, we're gonna have to get oh, footage man. of this and then bring it back to the uh, podcast. Yeah. Oh my God, he wants to make me look bad on camera. <laughs> you already got the tap. Now he wants to make yeah. you look bad on oh, camera. Good, good, man. Everything. We'll all go. We'll all go on the trip. So, but yes, Sounds let's stay good. in touch, Mateus. Let's stay in touch and uh, let's have you back asap. We'll get uh, you know we'll get you scheduled in here and um, let's know when you can come out to the Hamptons again. Yeah, I, I'm just waiting for the invitation. Whatever, guys, let me know. I will show up. You guys know I, I will just show up. But be on time, all right? I am on time. I'm, you guys sure always you make fun of me, of Brazilian yeah. time, but I am you, on time. You eat, you eat what? Every two or three hours. We're going to have yeah. to pack up the food for you here. Well, yes, for sure. I wanted that food. If you invite <laughs> me, you better give me food, all right? Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna say thank you to everybody. Thank you for calling me in. And, like, it was nice to see you guys. And thank you for, for everything. It was The friendship is great, and I wanted to go up there. I want you guys to come down here, too. Visit Royal. We we open and want to guys you come. Got some gear. All right, gonna have some no gear training, special training with you guys. And thank you very much, guys. Enjoy the weather. It's beautiful in Long Island today. Follow you what uh, Royal at Royal Jiu Jitsu on on social media. Yes, please follow at Royal Jiu Jitsu Academy, and you can also follow me on Instagram at Matheus Lutes. Any other info that you guys need, we're gonna be there. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Mateus. Thanks, Mateus. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye, bye. Take care. Oh. Nice. That was that was a fun roll too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Even oil roll. Like, yeah. You ever want to spice up your day? Just hang out with Mateus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going back to what we were talking about with um with Kasai. I mean, I remember working and, and joining the Kasai team, and right when COVID hit, we all had a team call, and we were just like in, in, in disbelief. And, you know, Rich was like, oh, things are going to change, guys. Things are really going to change. We're like, really? There's no way they can shut down tournaments. How can yeah. they do this and that? And then here we are. But now we're seeing starting to change and we're seeing the sport now starting to come back. You know, at first it was Florida and Texas, uh, mm -hmm. you know, opening up. And now we're seeing more restrictions lifting up. But what, what do you think, uh, Rich, as far as where you see sport growing from here? And like, you know, we're seeing still different rule sets out there. We're seeing still different things. What do you think? Uh, well, I think the, the prognosis for the sport is just better every day for, for a variety of reasons. One is maybe the biggest reason that we all overlook. It's like, it's like Kasai isn't going to make the sport. You know, somebody's not going to make it. What's going to happen is look at every strip mall around that area. But, you know, I travel around the country a lot. Um, it used to be that when I went to cities, I always would try to get in some, you know, workout. Um, Cleveland or in Chicago Atlanta, you know, yeah. or in Europe. Mm -hmm. And it was a challenge, you know, back in the days yes. to find, you know, a place to train. You'd, you know, have to ask around. And now it's literally almost impossible to go almost anywhere yeah. on the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not the North Pole, but, you know, somewhere <laughs> on the planet where, where you might theoretically be and not be able to find a dojo. Well, some of your travels, including Abu Dhabi, all these other places, like you, you easily find training partners over there. You even said when Kasai was running heavy that you were in Abu Dhabi and they were asking for Kasai over there. They were asking for Kasai over there. So, I mean, that, that wasn't Abu Dhabi, that was in Saudi Arabia. Saudi, okay. okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah, in Abu Dhabi, I, I had the good fortune of Sheikh training almost every time I've been out there wow. with Sheikh Tanun uh, bin Zayed Al Mayan. You know, the. the, the, the with Henzo a lot, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Henzo. Again, is his uh, sense of oh, wow. That's amazing. Um, but when I was in Saudi, I, I found the gym. It was just last minute. I didn't have that. That time I showed up at the gym and I got to the counter to pass. I was just a drop in. And they said, You're the Kasai guy. <laughs> and then everybody came out to shake my hand. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. All the way across, across yeah. the world. Yeah. And yet everybody would think, and it is, and it's a sport, relatively yeah. small. But like you said, everybody that trains Jiu Jitsu, they know the big names in the sport, the big promotions in yep. the sport. But it's funny. I've been in the business world. I thought I was reasonably successful for 40 years, mm -hmm. making a name for myself in the business world. Not one person ever took a selfie. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, I just, you know, I, we, we, like, we, let's we, hang out. We build a, a grappling promotion and everybody and their brother <laughs> wants to have me on Instagram. With them. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really fun. How did the whole connection with Hollis start just at Henzo's to want to start Kasai? Is that how you guys yeah, just um, well, you know, you heard about what, you know, a lot of the reasons why I want, why it was a passion for me. Mm. And Hollis, I mean, look, if you want somebody who is, um, you know, the, at the epicenter of the universe of jujitsu, mm. you know, Hollis has got to be on a pretty short list of yeah. those people. 
He knows everybody and anybody. Uh, he's world class. Um, he's like the nicest guy in the world uh, as well. I mean, and you know, it's just funny. We we would dream up matches, and Hollis would say, "Okay, I'll call." Him. You know him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it didn't matter who we named. That's you could name you know anybody. He would say, "Oh, you know, I can call." Him. Um, or he knows somebody who knows somebody, you know, and uh, and he's great businessman. He's just just super nice guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's an important piece because passion doesn't run a business. You need you need the day to day operations. Yeah, no, definitely. That funny story about Hollis is uh, when I had joined the Kasai team because you were training here and you see what I had been doing with Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, did you have given full disclosure that you're a member of the Kasai team? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, once jumping on board after uh, you know running Jiu-Jitsu Motivation for a while, uh, and then talking to Hollis, and he was like, Greg. You can grow the Kasai Instagram to more than what how many followers I have, and I'll come to Hampton Jiu Jitsu and do a seminar. And he came to do a seminar. Well, it took us a year. It did. It did. Well, we did. Yeah. It did. These things don't happen overnight. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> they, don't, they don't happen overnight. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was yeah. impressive, though. I, that was, I was like, oh man, I, I got to bring yeah, home the for these guys. Yeah. That was a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah but we, we, when we started, we had somebody who did our social media. Mm-hmm. And but then he um, he had too many demands from his job, and he actually got transferred to another location, and it wasn't going to work. And we needed a media guy, and I said, and like every minute I've ever been talking to Greg, he's either rolling or on social media, or he's on social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I have to admit that. Yeah. I'm a, you know, one man show here. I got to be able to you right. know, promote the business right. and uh, but, you know, right. he's running jujitsu motivation. He's running the Hamptons account. Yeah. He's doing yeah. all those. We have a podcast. Stuff. Now you have a podcast. Greg was the perfect guy. It's been, it's been awesome working with him. Yeah, it's been great. I appreciate the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I just want to say what you what you did for the sport and, uh, yeah. you know, starting to side and getting the promotion out there and just being a guy willing to, uh, you know, grow the sport was... Uh, well, it's to change it. Right? Yeah. And yeah. change it, you know, change it where there is a big stage mm-hmm. for these, you know... At athletes. that particular point in time, yeah. too, because there wasn't a show with right. that level of production. production clubs. I mean, yeah. there obviously still isn't. Yeah. But... Um, there was also no gi, uh, you know, sports history as in gi, but just thought it would just be so much easier to sell to yeah, uh, person, yeah. Joe, yeah. Joe Sixpack, you know, uh, <laughs> right. you know, something well, with, no, it's easier to understand. They can right? relate it to UFC. Right. Yeah. So how did you come up? So how did you come up with those, those pieces, right? To change jujitsu, to come up with those things that would be more appealing mm. to, you know, Joe Sixpack, right? Because, you know, it, we talked about this a little bit earlier. You mentioned, like, the UFC. You know, it's a lot. People, are like, people like watching that. Whether they want to admit it or not, mm-hmm. they like seeing that. And how did you look at Kasai when you started Kasai and think about what are the things I need to change in traditional jiu-jitsu in order for it to be more appealing? Oh, it's a long question. Yes. Because <laughs> we have spent, Greg can tell you, and even in the earlier days before mm-hmm. Greg, I mean, we had Kasai on the drawing board for years mm-hmm. before it actually came to fruition. We flew out. We had one notable trip. We flew out to see Kenny Florian, who ended up being part of our original team, um, still is, uh, where we watched, um, you know, a couple, you know, Chris, a lot of the fights going on back there. I'm forgetting the name, but what was the name of that big tournament with the drums? Oh, um, uh, well, you had Pride? No, Pride in Japan? No, it was, uh, anyway, forgetting the name. Metamorphs? Metamorphs. Thank you, Greg. Uh, mm-hmm. Meta Morris, there was EDI, mm-hmm. we, it was like a double header weekend, there right, was one right. of each, we went to a bunch of academies, and we thought through, you know, what would we do? So, the answer is, uh, here's at least how we thought of it, no gi versus gi. Uh, tournament where eight guys enter and one guy leaves right. was a very understandable story to everybody. Right. You know, if you create a whole bunch of super fights, that's great. That's the way it's traditionally done. But, um, you know, in UFC, you can't do that. We have a natural advantage. You can't have four MMA fights in one day. Yeah, back you know, to back to back. Not yeah, not yeah. realistic. And, yeah. you know. So uh, I just think the drama of bringing eight guys in and one guy went, having it be round robin versus um, elimination. Because you come to see the guy you want to fight, and if he loses in the first round, uh, yeah. you know, you're stuck. So everybody is guaranteed to fight somebody and basically everybody's fighting each other, Multiple at least in, in your bracket. Right. 
So you get to see that, you know, if you win, you have to win four times. So it's sort of a battle of attrition also. Uh, but then as far as the rules are concerned, we, you know, the stalling penalty, you know, we try to get the refs to push the activity so there wasn't some stalling. Advantages, hard for people to understand. We got rid of advantages. We gave you a point for most of the things that are advantages are just pushing the action. Right. Uh, to create, uh, you know, higher scores. and Mission and, attempts. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we did, you know, a whole bunch of things like that. And just after every show, we would sit down. How long would we sit down and we would just analyze, like, what can we do right. to make it better? Some of it was just production stuff. <laughs> but, you know, when it came to rules, we just want, um, we had the biggest uh, stage, biggest map of any tournament. I mean, some of these tournaments, not naming names, but they're like on post yeah. and, and you're constantly out, out of bounds. Out. We've all fought in them. You're yeah. out of bounds every three and, seconds. And, yeah. and there's two things bad about going out of bounds. One is it disrupts the play, but the other worst part you can get hurt. You can get hurt really badly. So we uh, we we had the giant stage. Um, of course, the big guy. You know, everybody always finds the corners anyway. <laughs> so we hired spotters, like big big ass guys that are just like keeping it on the stage. So it's not always the ref putting it back to the center. You know, just stuff like that. Um, we promoted. You know, we went aggressive and before, and you know, going out to do interviews, building videos. Right. Our favorite thing was making videos. <laughs> Music videos or just any, talking any. videos, just to uh, get people excited and and you know stuff like that. Because these and the other thing, last but not least, is what we did something or do something that's different than um, most 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 promotions are either a tournament mm -hmm. or they're super fights. Right. We did tournaments with super fights. Mm -hmm. So the ones with tournaments would have like some girls, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Some, just filler because you can't have the guys go out each round. You need a break in between. And, uh, so we would put as much money into the tournament as we would to find the best super fights. Mm -hmm. And picking eight people for a bracket and picking, you know, what would end up being really six or eight people from three or four super fights mm -hmm. would be, um, you know, that's our dream. Mm -hmm. It's like thinking of styles and, you know, and how you would match. Right. This style, like, what's your dream? We would just all sit around every day and say, what would be your dream right, match? to see this. this we come up with some wacky stuff. You know, it's silly, but, you know, we, we would mm -hmm. talk about it. Then, of course, some guys aren't available, but then you brainstorm to come up with something else. And we do the same for the undercard. Now, uh, I would still contest that, you know, many of Kasai's undercards are as good as, you know, main card. A lot of guys. Sure. They're just maybe not guys that people are as much of a household name. Right. Gordon or Greg Jones. Right. Or, you know, uh, whoever. But um, but they're the next guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, and think of all the guys that are dominating today, mm -hmm. like the Tackets and yeah. the Rotolos and people like that. That was our undercard, right? right? You know? So is them, is them you know, and you're, we're seeing them matched up against people, you know, comparable skills. So yeah, I mean, that was the biggest thing I think with Kasai was everything was like ever changing, and we, that was mm -hmm. part of it. Like one of the things they added was uh, points for the back, but for body triangle. Like, to change that because, right. hey, that makes sense. Why wouldn't right. you award body triangles? Even arguably a better position than just hooks, yeah. you know? And at the time, no gi grappling at the time, I mean, it's recently changed, but in IBJJF, there was no leg lock. So we try to make, you know, make everything legal. Yeah. You're not gonna, hooks, yeah. Can I gouge the guy? But other than that, you know, <laughs> you could pretty much do it. And that particular point in time at promotions and tournaments, um, you were seeing a split. Jiu-Jitsu, IBJJF, they wanted nothing to do with the sub only, and vice versa. Kasai was one of the only promotions to say, how are we going to get these guys to fight? Well, like you said, you got rid of advantages, but yet, the looks are legal. But yet, there's still points. Mm -hmm. So, And the last answer to your question is um, something like EBI. So it's a very specific set of rules, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, you weren't getting some of the best uh, back in the day, you weren't getting some of the best IBJJF champions gotcha, to in. do EBI because they they understood that you brought up they brought up a lot of points, right? And it's just a different rule set. Totally it's different like world, literally right? going from I don't know, you know, playing golf to playing pool. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like board. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it took a while for the jujitsu industry. So to realize we wanted that. to. We, no matter what we did, we tried to find something in between. Mm -hmm. So you can it can be close enough to what the what the world champion you know crowd was used to, but but attractive enough that you can attract all the no gi special right. the submission only specialists um, 
And then we would go out of our way to try to make those matchups. Yeah. To get the guys that were the, you know, classic, you know, um, you know, Gi no Gi, you know, IBJJF against, you know, some of the more, the guys you'd really only seen in the summer. So you're seeing much more interesting matches. Yeah. And I think too, I mean, you know, one of the things you talked about is some of these athletes that were like, wow, I'm on this big stage. Like I really feel the center stage where you see all these other tournaments, you know, there was so much going on. Do you know what I mean? And what's interesting too is your audience was just the audience that came to actually see the fight first. Like when you go to these big tournaments, it's mostly the fighters, their families, coaches, you know, there's not a lot of people that are actually there going to see the event. You had three so, spectators. Right, you had spectators. You put your finger on it. We tried to make jiu-jitsu appealing to people that don't do jiu-jitsu. Right? <laughs> there's a lot of people that do jiu-jitsu. So yep. You can still fill a lot of seats. Yes, but, yes. <laughs> but, but, you know, when I saw, when I went around the seats and I saw a lot of uh, regular ears, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, that was the most gratifying thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, a good point you bring up because part of, I think, keep saying it, but Kasai was that first, I think, production that, and promotion that really got the IBJJF guys willing to fight the Savoni guys. Mm-hmm. You know, like in my IBJJF, he looks more illegal, and they right. were avoiding that game. It took a while for, I think, Jiu-Jitsu to realize that the IBJJF is different than the Savoni. Mm-hmm. To the point that I want to bring up next is, is we're seeing now, like we saw the uh, WNO show last night, um, you know, when you're fighting Savoni and you pass the guard and you're grinding, but you're really stalling, you think you, you're playing the points game. But you're realizing you're down on judges' criteria because you're not attacking. And they brought it up last night on the um, on the show where it's like, should we be awarding a guard pass if I return my guard? In other words, if I pass the guard but I return it, you don't do anything with it. You don't, right. you know, either at least get an advantage for a tap. Maybe you shouldn't be awarded the points in the first place mm-hmm. to stop that the person from thinking just hold and just position. Right. The goal is submission. Mm-hmm. So that's another topic that we've always been talking. About. Whatever your rules, the game. People will evolve their games around to, yeah, to, to win. So you really have to be thoughtful about your rules because you want the game to be as interesting as possible. And now IBJJF, I think it was more of a, a money thing is they were just feeling like they were losing people because heel hooks weren't legal. That they said, all right, let's make it legal, brown, brown and black, but let's see how it goes. Now you see everybody starting to go into right. it. But you know, it's, it's interesting too. It's only adults, right? The IBJF. Yes, it's yeah. not like masters or anything else. Exactly. It's only adult, adult that they actually adult do. Adult brown and black. Right? Brown no and black, gi. I think. Yeah. And no gi. Well, there's no masters. For there's no master. Like, you can't do heel hooks. Well, leg locks, you can't. Like, no leg locks. Sorry, ball, yes, yes. Specifically yes. heel hooks. Yes. yes. Heel hooks. Sorry. Sorry. So no, no heel hooks when you're no, no, I'll have to enter the open. Yeah, That's right. You have to fight adults. You have to fight adults. Which, by the way, is fighting in next weekend. If they find. If they find, find somebody, opponent, yeah. anybody, uh, <laughs> if they find an opponent for him at Tap Cancer Out, okay. uh, we want to give a shout out to Tap for Cancer sure. Out. Great, great charity. Amazing charity. They raise, I mean, a ton of money just for charity. And that yeah, was seen, Cancer specifically. Yeah, and to Cancer specifically. Uh, so if you guys want to check out their organization, Tap oh, Cancer yeah. Out. Um, but that's another thing, too. You haven't really seen promotions and organizations. Now, these are local tournaments. You're not even talking. Now they're right. starting to do some super fights now. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just an amazing organization, too. Yeah, I love it. Uh, by the way, I'm doing uh, they find it better for me. I'm doing gi. Gi? Yeah. 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 So I've been doing jujitsu for 15 uh, or so no, years. Mateus, I never man. fought rematch, gi. rematch with Mateus. Yeah, I don't think he's, I don't think he's gonna make feather. <laughs> Wait, most of your jujitsu career, even just training, has been no gi, right? I've trained almost exclusively no gi until COVID. Okay. Wow. I put yeah. on the gi at the beginning of COVID and I haven't taken it. Okay. And then everybody here at Hampton Jiu Jitsu knows Rich as the no gi guy. So then when they find out he's been only gi Three for the gi. last six months, they're like, what no, is going on? Oh, yeah. wow. They're like, what is going on? <laughs> but it's amazing to see because now we're doing all sorts of lapel stuff and tying it in. He's got his own, uh, I, you know, I, Rich has got enough unique material that I really hope the guys at BJJ Fanatics and Bernardo Faria are going to reach out to him for specific uh, instructional. It's amazing stuff. Yeah, I was thinking of doing something for maybe for charity, uh, you know, for oh. to donate the money. Yeah. Maybe jiu jitsu motivation. Do it, come we'll do it on jiu jitsu motivation. We'll have you the uh, camera production for you yeah. ready to go. Yeah, I mean, um, one of the other things about COVID is uh, I think I single handedly supported BJJ Fanatics and and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Keenan's um, uh, Jiu Jitsu X, yeah. Jiu Jitsu X, X and, yeah. and a couple of others. I think I've bought and watched. 70 videos. Wow. Okay. Over since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, or maybe dating back a little bit further. 
I've just become a student of, you know, mm -hmm. different styles and yeah. connecting things. Wow. But I've been very fortunate that, uh, you know, I've done privates for years, up until recently with Eddie Cummings. Yeah. Eddie's he's temporarily retired, but temporarily. I'll get him back. Uh, and Paul Miao, um, mm -hmm. John Danaher, as I mentioned. Um, and, you know, now studying the tape of, uh, of, of a lot of uh, Eric Owings, who's, uh, mm -hmm. who's my partner at our gym, who is yeah. technically sound as any professional. He just doesn't compete these days. Um, so I'm blessed that I've had instruction from all these. Well, players. now not only are you talking about, and shout out to Keenan's Jiu-Jitsu X and, mm -hmm. and BJJ Fanatics, but not only are you getting all these videos from them, but you're personally doing privates with these guys. Meows. I mean, how close you are with Eddie. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's an amazing. Well, the pro and then the other thing is, I always have questions. So mm -hmm. it's really funny because um, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying. You know, I want to get the videos that I'm interested in. Right, right. Uh -huh. I'm doing a study on uh, single leg X or so whoever has a video and and uh, uh, really good, really good video. Just just because I'm studying that is Adam Wardzinski. I don't know Adam Wardzinski. Yeah. But, um, but Adam, but, if you're out there, if you're out there <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Uh, or Mikey uh, Musumeshi's videos uh -huh. on, yep. um, you know, he's done 13 videos. I've watched every one at least once, some of them several times. Uh, but John Danner's videos. Mm -hmm. yep. When I have questions about John Danner's videos, I text or call John Danner right. and he answers my question. <laughs> Paul Schreiner, his, he's a great instructor. He's, you know, he teaches at Marcellus again. Yeah. I had tons of questions. I would call Paul Schreiner. You know, Paulo has done some videos. I asked Paulo. Gianni sent videos. I called Gianni. Um, it's, it's, wow. I mean, where do you get that? You know, you can right. literally go like, and say, I didn't understand this. Can you explain that? And then we have a long discussion of why I taught it this way instead of this way and why you can do it. Here's some variations you can do. Boy, you really grow your game. And, and think of it, if you're an instructor, the greatest thing you can ever have, if you're a mm -hmm. teacher and instructor, I don't care what your field is. Mm -hmm is an interested student yeah you know yeah. when when you Ask see those uh, when the, the light in the student's eyes that they get excited about what you're teaching i know it's true for me when mm -hmm. i teach right um and my mother-in-law's a teacher just, and she says all the time and she catches kids and you know her mm -hmm. she feels like you know I, mean, I can get them excited about third grade or second grade mm -hmm. in case you know they're gonna really succeed yeah. and um you know and i think I just think it's refreshing because when I do the same to them and I call and I say, you know, John Denner has got more important things to do than to tell me why he, why he's reaching through an underhook instead of an overhook on right. a, you know, move, but, but, you know, he'll go into the detail with me for, for, for half an hour. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes even, you know, as an instructor, right, that makes you think of why do I actually do that? Because sometimes mm -hmm. you're not even sure, like it just seems natural or that's like the natural. And by I, teaching, I, you learn. I, right? by I, teaching, I made you a learn rule that if I questions. don't understand exactly why mm -hmm. you're doing something, then you shouldn't do it and you shouldn't teach it you should until you figure it out. There or you. just go live and see which one works works, <laughs> and then you'll figure out why you're doing it. Yeah. I mean, but Rich is legendary for that. I mean, we can go to his house in just three, four hours and just like just going over stuff. The original Hampton Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, the original, <laughs> the original Hampton Jiu-Jitsu in the basement in Southampton. But it's just uh, attesting to the fact that Rich's eyes light up just as much as the people learning the moves from him. And that's how you can tell he's excited about it. Yeah. What happens, Greg and I will show up one day and I'll say, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, yeah. And he'll we'll say, Rich, he'll say, what do you got? Send and send and tape back and forth. And I mean, that's, that's, how, that's how it happens on mm -hmm. the map, you know? But Rich, really appreciate you coming in yes. and My pleasure. Uh, giving us pleasure. some history. My My pleasure. What uh, got anything to expect uh, yeah. from Rich Byrne in the next? Uh, I well, don't know. Uh, What's new? Yeah, let's. You know, I, I don't have. So yeah, let's let's. Uh, I, I'm not good at self promotion, so let's let's mm -hmm. talk about this. Machine mixed martial arts, New York City, seventy eight Fifth Avenue, it's Fifth Avenue and Thirteenth Street. Um, we got a great crew. It's an awesome gym. Um, uh, we feel like we're back in action post COVID. Finally, mm -hmm. finally. So things are getting back to speed. Uh, my day job, you know, I actually work, you know, in the finance world. Uh, we're going back full time wow. in September. Okay. So my beautiful Hamptons one and a quarter year vacation is going to be. Oh, no. I mean, I'm on the phone all day long, but yeah. at least I get to be out yeah. here, you know, when I'm done. And uh, we're so all hoping it was going to be permanent. Rich. I'm going to go back to work. Uh, Kasai, you know, New York's going to open up. And, you know, we, 
you know, if we lived in Dallas, the world would have been a lot different. But, you know, we live in New York and things are pretty strict here. So we're going to start putting, putting the uh, the dream team back together and, That's amazing. and doing that. And uh, otherwise, you can catch me between now and the end of the summer training at Hamptons Jiu-Jitsu. Awesome. The, the epicenter of the sport. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rich. Appreciate it, Rich. We appreciate it. Thanks. All right, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, share. And uh, for those of you out there, make sure you keep sending us your rolling videos so we can get to review them on the show's coming. Have a good one, guys.